got dark on me a couple of nights ago and I should have flipped this log over now it's actually full of ice I'm gonna have to curve that out and I think it was almost done I just had to drop it in place and check it out to make sure it was done so clean that out drop it in And if it fits, then I'll just lift it back up. Stick the moss in there, flip it down, back and pin it in place. Now I can finish this one off here. This morning I was reading a book on, uh, on economics. It was specifically, specifically, <laughs> specifically the uh, Federal Reserve's called the creature from Jekyll Island. With all this stuff that's going on with um, in, in the economy right now, with the sh you know shortages and talk of inflation, actual real inflation that we've been seeing, that seems to have been denied for a while. Um, but I have a fairly good grasp of economics, as good as a layperson can, I guess, because I have made it a bit of a um, an interest to follow my entire life, um, especially. Uh, being an entrepreneur and like being in business in the past trying to understand the economy and how it's affecting my business and how it can uh, maneuver within that and uh, Just seeing all the signs leading up to now over decades really uh, Leading up to this hyperinflation or inflation that we're having right now seemed like it um, inevitable and the fact that it took um, this situation that we've been in for the last 18 months to bring it to a head is I don't know, it's not surprising, but it's uh, a bit of a shock to, that it uh, came to a head in it's such a rapid fashion, an extreme fashion. Um, when you think about, I don't know, probably since 2008, with the infusion of cash into the, or a greater infusion of cash into the system by the Federal Reserve, um, it was inevitable that that had to be paid for and not through higher taxes because it's hard for politicians to stay in power if they keep raising your taxes and we vote them out of power um, but just printing money causes inflation which is another form of taxation it erodes our, our the value of our money and our savings so um, it has the same effect as higher taxes anyway the money that's been injected over the last 18 months into the system to support people staying home and businesses being shut down it's uh, I, I, it's really hard to fully understand it but um, my understanding is that just printing money out of thin air and injecting it into the economy has to ca uh, cause inflation there's no other way we have lost productivity from having the economy essentially shut down or parts of it shut down for 18 months um, has to be paid for somehow and we're paying for it with you know, fake money, uh, fiat money that that um, is just printed at extremely high rates, uh, causing this inflation. So, if you look at the cost of uh, co cost of living compared to the increase in wages over the last 50 years, say in my lifetime, the proportion or the ratio just gets so far out of whack that that um, it's impossible now for my kids' generation to own a house at least while they're young. I bought my house, first house with my wife when we were, I was 26, 1996, and that was earlier than any of my friends. It was, that was uh, considered fairly early at that time. Now, I can't imagine uh, my kids being able to afford anything until much later than that. Anyway, my personal experience with that, um, getting into business for the first time in the early 2000s? Yeah, 21. I started my uh, commercial roofing and sheet metal company in, man, there was a track of dates, 2005 I guess that was, but I'd started another smaller business two or three years earlier than that. Um, anyway, I know from that experience and those experiences that in my industry, in the construction industry, profit margins of around 3% were typical. So if you did a million dollars worth of work, uh, you're lucky if you had thirty thousand dollars in profit after paying your employees your overhead and yourself so for any kind of shutdown to happen like if i was still in business 
over the last 18 months and had to shut my business down or had to deal with all these uh, different uh, health measures, it would have killed me. It would have put me out of business within a matter of a few months. And it's, um, the business was fairly young, so I didn't have a cash reserve built up. This is prior to my the failure of the business ultimately anyway, which happened essentially as a result of the 2008 financial crisis. As um, soon as there was any kind of interruption in the flow of money from my customers, I went out of business essentially with a bunch of other factors leading, uh, causing that as well. But anyway, um, point being that personal finances, personal you know, household uh, finances and business finances typically can't support any kind of interruption. So when you have an interruption like we've had um, with this health scare over the last 18 months, um, every business and a lot of families end up, well not every business, some have thrived, but most businesses and most families have ended up in a deficit that um, can only be erased essentially through this creation of fake money into the system but what that does is then just creates inflation and then the things that you need to buy to survive and to thrive and to be um, occupied end up being more money or costing more money and it doesn't seem um, seems manageable at first but when that starts to accumulate that that inflation starts to build and income doesn't return to normal or doesn't exceed normal in order to make up for the losses then there's an inevitable inevitable uh, failure uh, personally and, and in business and then governments as well so anyway all of that has forced me to start reading more again on economics broader economics and trying to figure out how to prepare for that one of the things that we're looking at is if if inflation is going to continue to erode the value of our savings and of our income what's the best way to hedge that so in other words where do you put your money now where do you spend your money um, in order to offset future costs <laughs> And I kind of joke that the safety glasses everybody's been sending me is kind of one of those hedges, right? So um, safety glasses in my pocket today that I don't have to buy 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now is um, it's sort of a hedge on inflation. So even if I was to buy those things now at today's dollar and the increase in uh, or the decrease in the value of the dollar over time is greater than the increase in productivity, then it makes sense to own those durable goods and to purchase those durable goods and it really it supports the theory that I've been um, proposing for so well, since the beginning of my self-reliance I don't half a decade ago or more um, that if you have the money and you're working currently I, I never thought of in the like in the prepper sense but essentially I guess that's what I was suggesting is that if you have money you have a current a uh, decent job and you have excess cash that you should be using that to buy things like the tools that I buy that are hand tools that can be used for forever in order to continue to um, in my case live this lifestyle so in other words rather than buying another chainsaw if I was to buy another axe or saw or something like that that's something that doesn't need doesn't have any any um, uh, maintenance costs or very little maintenance costs over time on operating costs so Spending $100 on an axe today not only means I don't have to spend $150 on an axe two years from now with this current inflation rate, or say five years from now, um, it offsets that, but it also means I don't have any operating expenses. I don't have to buy fuel for that thing. And it allows me to, you know, the, the cliche uh, firewood warms you twice once you, when you cut it, once when you burn it. Um, that, that kind of applies. And it applies to a lot of things when you're using hand tools there's there's more than one benefit um, health for example staying physically fit and therefore you know as you're using that tool and therefore um, creating um, a better future for yourself but also lower costs in the form of health care so i try to look at everything i do and and uh, purchase and own based on that um, based on multifunctionality things that bring more value to me and my family than would you know first be implied by the item itself so I'm curious what everybody else is doing about this um, inflation problem what you're doing about 
the high cost of living, how you're um, you know, maybe earning extra income or what you're putting your money into if you have any excess uh, in the form of savings, what you're investing in, you know, precious metals, real estate, other durable goods, cryptocurrency, um, other forms of currency, like other countries' currencies or something. I don't know. It's a lot of ways that you can uh, prepare for a less economic, economically secure future. And uh, I'm looking at all of those and continuing to do my research as, as I act, but continuing to do my research and stay up to date on the most current um, state of affairs. Anyway, like I said, I'm curious what you guys think, what you're doing about it as well. If you could comment, uh, I'm really interested to have this conversation with you guys. And, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully we can all learn something and, and help each other prepare in different ways. Anyway, back to work. I'm going to get, the, get this thing in place and get another log or two before the next snow squall comes in.